York Giants. The pressure on the Giants' offensive line today. They have to block well to run the football and protect Kerry Collins if they hope to defeat the visiting Raiders. Great Thanksgiving Sunday that promises rain as we continue this afternoon. A temperature right now of 66 degrees and Jim Fossil trying to get his New York Giants turned around. Right now they sit at 5-5 five and five while John Gruden hopes to continue to move his Oakland Raiders 7-2, and two, the best record in the AFC. The Raiders have won the toss and they will receive. Greg Gumbel, Phil Sims, Armin Katayan. Welcome to Giants Stadium, everyone. It's a big game, especially for the New York Giants. Morton Anderson set to kick it away. Terry Kirby, number 42, is the deep man for the Raiders. And we are underway at Giants Stadium. Kirby from the six. 20. Tripped up at the 25 and forward to about the 29-yard line. Ralph Brown makes the stop after a 23-yard return. And here is Rich Gannon, starting Pro Bowl quarterback of a season ago and the number one rated quarterback in the National Football League coming into the action today. Greg, Rich Gannon just does a terrific job with this offense. One of the reasons why the Raiders can put in over 100 plays a week and send out five receivers on all pass patterns is because Rich Gannon can make quick decisions and find the open man. On first down, to give us to Charlie Garner, bounces outside and room to run. Midfield, 40. The 35 yard line of the New York Giants. The Giants come with pressure on the very first play of the game, trying to set a tempo for their football team. Look at the blitz up inside. Nobody, Brandon Short, who has the left side of the defense, supposed to stay outside, gets caught inside. Garner sees no room inside, jumps out, and makes a big run. We heard nothing but superlatives from the Giants yesterday about Charlie Garner and his ability to make things happen on the football field. He can catch the football out of the backfield, and he runs very hard. Michael Strahan said that from the 33-yard line. Garner again. And this time, Garner barely gets a yard. It'll be second and nine. The Raiders' offensive line has been battling injuries this year, but they continue to do a good job of, in the run game and protecting Rich Gannon. In the backfield with Garner is John Ritchie. Great wide receivers in Jerry Rice and Tim Brown, and Roland Williams is the tight end. Garner with a breather on the sideline. Terry Kirby is in the backfield on second and nine. Quick drop by Gannon, throws this side to Brown, and that's complete inside the 30-yard line. The New York Giant defense up front. Strahan leading the NFL in sacks with 15. Lance Legree starts in place of injured Keith Hamilton. The linebackers for the Giants, Barrow and Armstead, both having outstanding years. In the secondary, Will Allen and Jason Seahorn on the corner. Williams and Garns at safety. Randy Jordan and John Ritchie in the backfield. Gannon, with time, runs it right up the middle. Slides down at the 23-yard line, and that's enough for a first down. The catch for Tim Brown was number 900 of his great career. An eight-time Pro Bowler, the 1987 Heisman Trophy winner out of Notre Dame. Well, that time, Greg, going back to the last play, the Raiders sent all the receivers towards the sideline, and the Giants so determined to cover Tim Brown, Jerry Rice, they leave the middle open, and Rich Gannon sees it. It goes for a first down. We give us to Garner, and Garner ahead to the 20-yard line. Come on up, come on, come on, hey. A gain of three, and it'll be second and seven. You know, you got so many options. You're the Giants. You're playing defense against this Raider offense. What do you do? You cover Tim Brown. You cover Jerry Rice. Oh, no. We got to really bulk it up inside to stop the running game by the Raiders. And then you have a quarterback who makes good decisions and is mobile. Very hard to stop the Raiders offense. Second and eight. Now Garner and 
Richie split in the backfield. And throws. That's complete inside the 10, inside the 5 to Jerry Rice. Make it 235 straight games with a reception for Jerry Rice. Well, I got a chance to talk to John Fox, Greg, the defensive coordinator for the Giants, and it's just, it really does put you in a quandary. The Giants try to come out and be aggressive. They get burned on the first play. Generally, when you play the Raiders offense, you just got to sit back, try to contain them, and hope that they can't make that 12, 13 play drive to go down and score. Garner and Garner plows to about the one. Wow, that was that's a good description of that run, isn't it? <laughs> that's that's like a suicide attempt. Just plowed up in there and see if you can get a yard or two. And the Raider backs, we've done a few Raider games this year, Greg. And the one thing you we know, when they get the football, no matter who's running the football, they stick it up in there hard. Their goal is to hopefully gain two or three yards. They consider that a successful run. Oh, Rich Gannon says if you can be good on first and second down, then you put the defensive 75. coordinator in a 75. bind because they can't do what they normally want to do. Richie and Zach Crockett to give is to Crockett straight ahead and into the end zone for the touchdown. Well, the Raiders, Adam Truitt center. Mo Collins, number 79, starting today at right guard. They just kind of overpower, with, along with John Ritchie at fullback, overpower the Giants and get into the end zone. The Charlie Garner 38-yard run set the tone for that drive by the Raiders and Sebastian Janikowski on for the extra point. And he is a perfect 29 for 29 with points after touchdown this season. 7-0 Oakland Raiders over the New York Giants 10 20 to 4 to go in the first quarter and here's the look at the touchdown such a hard spot to score from in the NFL nowadays inside the two yard line but it tells you a lot about the Raiders that they can just line it up and run it in there and John Ritchie you know it's going to be a physical game first drive already bleeding good lead block good block by Adam Truitt center there's John Ritchie and you have that it's bleeding <laughs> Uh, John Ritchie has that little bit of a problem where his helmet cuts right into his forehead and you know what he says as soon as he gets hit it opens up and it's just it's not going to heal till after the season's over. Yeah it's not going to heal but he's also he says I'm used to the pain too so it happens every single game nothing he can do about it. You're right, Greg. It'll heal up when the season's over. Oakland Raiders with 51 rushing yards on that drive. Well, they did it all. Running the football, quarterback scrambled, throwing the football, and then they really used the power game down inside to score with the running play. Janikowski to kick. Ron Dixon and Omar Stoutmire are deep, and one of the things Jim Fossil looking for is good effort on kick returns today by Ron Dixon. This, however, is Stoutmire. Hit him in the foot, picks it up at the nine. And it is not going to reach the 15 yard line. So onto the field comes Kerry Collins. And we talked about it before this day began having fumble problems. Second in the National Football League with 14 of them as you look at his night at Minnesota on Monday. He has fumbled, Greg, but I tell you what, you'll see. I don't know what, what will happen today, but when you look at the giant films, what they've done to fast. fast the past few weeks, Kerry Collins deals with a lot of pressure, a lot of people around his, his feet, and he gets hit way too often when he's not expecting it. Collins has been sacked 27 times this season. We'll start it off with Tiki Barber gets the roll on the right side and out to the 20-yard line, tripped up by Charles Woodson coming off the corner. Well, the Giants offensive line, they have struggled protecting the quarterback today. They've got to open some hold, holes up for the running game. In the backfield with Barber, Greg Camella, Amani Toomer, and Ike Hilliard, the wide receivers, and Howard Cross, the veteran tight end. Here's Sean Payton, the man who calls the plays on offense for the Giants. Well, I told you the, the Giants want to come out, and they are determined to run the football against this Raider defense. The Raiders given up four and a half yards per rushing attempt so far this season. Ron Dane is in the backfield, and he gets the handoff. 
goes for about two on the play. The Oakland defense. Upshaw, Russell, Grady Jackson, and Tony Bryant. The linebackers for the Raiders, Greg Beekert, he's a signal caller, and he's playing very well, too, this year. Familiar corners in Woodson and Eric Allen. Charles Woodson playing with a painful turf toe injury. Dorsett and Pope are the safeties. There is Chuck Bresnahan, the defensive coordinator for the Raiders. Third and two. it over the middle and it's almost intercepted. Daryl Russell almost picked it off and we go to New York for our first update with Jim Nance. Jim. All right, thank you, Greg. The Buffalo Bills are imploding. They went up 27-17, but Arians missed the point after. Mare tied it with a minute 10 to go from 39 yards. Then the Bills fumbled on the kick. The Dolphins have the ball at the Bills 30 with 55 seconds to play. Let's go back to Greg and Phil. All right, Jim. On to kick is Rodney Williams with a cast on his right wrist. Suffered a fracture the first week in November. Ball bounces and it takes a hop in favor of the Raiders. It's down at the 45-yard line by Dehani Jones. 31-yard punt by Rodney Williams, and that's not one of his better efforts at all. You know, go back to the last play by the Giants, Craig. Again, Kerry Collins, the Giants got what they wanted third and short so they think they can protect the quarterback in those situations they don't pick up the blitz and they're fortunate it wasn't an interception so while the offense gathers to talk that tells you a little bit about how rich gannon distributes the football well i've said to you before john gruden says we don't have one offense we have like five different ones a tim brown offense a rich gannon offense one for jerry rice now with time, up the seam, incomplete. Tim Brown was the intended receiver. Second and ten. You know, that's not something you see a lot of from the Raiders. Their passing game is so east-west. They cross receivers, they throw to the sideline short, and then when they go up the field vertically, it's, well, doesn't even, doesn't even look right. You know, and Rich Gannon telling us as the season has progressed, the Raiders have added more offensive plays, and he says it's easier to do when you have veterans like Tim Brown and Jerry Rice. Yeah, that's right. And a veteran quarterback and a coach that likes to put a lot of plays in. Wheatley. And Wheatley for about four to the 49 and let's check in once again with Jim Nance. Jim. Back to Greg and Phil. Boy, what an interesting football game with all the talk about Jay Fiedler's job being on the line in Miami. Dolphins slow starters today. Randy Jordan in the backfield. Third and six. Gannon with all kinds of time and there's the pass across the middle and Jerry Porter can't hold on. Will Patterson, the third-round draft pick rookie out of Western Illinois, was right with it. Yeah, Peterson going across the middle. You can see Rich Cannon, nice throw, but it really a terrific play, breaking it up from Jerry Porter. So here is Shane Leckler, the leading punter in the NFL. He'll kick it away to Tiki Barber. Leckler averaging 47.3 yards a kick. And this one sails out of bounds, so neither of these very good punters gets off a very good first effort here in the first quarter. Raiders lead it by a touchdown. And, uh, the New York Giants find themselves already in a hole down 7 nothing. And as we said, Phil, they're very much in the same situation the Denver Broncos were on Thanksgiving Day. They've got to win. Yeah, do or die, you always have to be afraid of teams that are in desperate situations, especially when they're a good team like the New York Giants. To give us a Tiki Barber, cuts it back inside of a block, and now goes outside and runs Field runs over a potential tackler and is inside the 45 yard line. 36 yards when all is said and done. Well, a lot of this just has to do with Tiki Barber. Second effort, and look at some of the giant offensive players just staying with their blocks. Dusty Ziegler does a good job. Lomas Brown stayed with his block forever, and it allows Tiki Barber to get outside and make a big run. He ran over Charles Woodson, and Marquez Pope came over and finally made the stop. And this is one of the reasons why you want to have patience, run the football against the Raiders. Sometimes when you get past the defensive line, you can make these big runs. Coming this way now, Tiki Barber cutting it back again. 
inside the 40 to the 36 yard line. Let's go down to Armin Katayan. Armin. Thanks Greg. You know concerned his team had kind of fallen into a funk and was playing way too tight. Jim Fossil did some unexpected things this week both in practices and games. The latest surprise came last night when he stood up before his team at the team meeting and said OK you know where the stadium is you know what time the game is he said yep all right go out and have some fun he said oh yeah by the way if you win tomorrow I'm going to give you five days off next week during the bye week just the kind of incentive this team needed Greg back to you all right Armin thank you Ron Dane into the game is the deep man in the eye formation takes the handoff takes it off the left side and appears to have enough for a first down. Well, you know, if you want to really get to the players' emotions, tell them you're going to get five days off, especially this late in the season when you're tired, you're beat up, and, you, and of course, these players, they know how big this game is to them. Well, you know, I think the first instinct of any fan would be, can an NFL team afford to take five days off? Well, you know, you worry about that after you win this game if you get to that situation. But the Giants... As Jim Fossil said, we're about running the football. We have not done it well this year, and they want to get it done today. Kerry Collins has his man incomplete. Juravicius had it, and it went right through his hands inside the 10-yard line. Well, Joe Jaravicius last week dropped a big pass against the Minnesota Vikings on Monday night. Stopped the scoring drive. Nice move. Gets Marquez Pope outside. Goes up in the inside. Easy catch for an NFL receiver. Perfect throw by Kerry Collins. And that is a problem for the Giants. They get down here near the goal line. You're looking for the big play to score from the 32. You get the perfect defense, a good route, and you drop the pass. The pitch for Barber. Block around the right side. And forward to about the 30, just inside the 30-yard line. Marquez Pope comes to make the stop. And you know, if you're a Raider fan too, you think, well, we got a team. This team can win a lot of games. We can go to the playoffs and do maybe even get to the Super Bowl. You see Chuck Bresnahan, the defensive coordinator. The big concern is can they get the defense back in order and stop the opposing team's running games? We saw what happened a couple weeks ago. Sean Alexander at Seattle and John Gruden very concerned about it and hoping they can find some answers today. A 38-yard run for Charlie Garner set the tone for the Raiders. Tiki Bottle with a 36-yarder has the Giants in position. And penalty markers fly, whistles blow. Our referee today is Bill Carollo. Prior to the snap, full start. 77, offense, five-yard penalty. Remains Luke, third down. Luke Pettigrew, the right tackle made the move they committed a ton of penalties at minnesota last week well the receivers for the vikings caused a lot of it and then again not to make excuses but the crowd noise in the dome in minnesota on monday night you're going to have penalties in those situations especially on offense and the giants had quite a few tumor and hilliard up top jura at the bottom of the screen Throws far side of the field. Camilla out of the backfield and lost the football out of bounds. Did he have control? He did, and the line of scrimmage will be the 29-yard line. That'll be short of a first down, and onto the field will come the field goal unit. Well, when you get in situations like this, a quarterback's really they you've got to know what's expected of you. Kerry Collins knew. Don't take a sack, pick up some yards, and give us a chance to kick a field goal. In his 20th season, Morton Anderson has a chance to tie George Blanda for number two scoring all time with this field goal. This is a 47-yard attempt. It looks good. Number two all time, 2,002 career points for Morton Anderson, 7 3 Raiders. You know, they do, Greg. No matter where they go, we see that group of fans that likes to um, dress up. Dress up a little. <laughs> I like Terry Kirby deep. I like to dress up on Sundays, just not quite like that. Kirby will field this one at the 8. 25. 35 and out to about the 37 or 38 yard line. Rich Gannon gets ready to come back on the field and we take a timeout. 7-3 open.
Dolphins come from behind to beat Buffalo by a score of 34-27. Greg Gumbel, Phil Simms, Armin Katayan here at Giants Stadium where the Raiders lead the Giants by a score of 7-3. to 321 to play here in the first quarter. Charlie Garner and John Ritchie shifting the position behind Gannon. Garner. Not much. Charlie Garner had a 38-yard run that set up this touchdown by Zach Crockett on the Raiders' first drive. The Giants came back on Morton Anderson's 469th career field goal. He is now tied with 2,001 points with George Blanda for number two scoring all time as he trails Gary Anderson of the Vikings. Something unusual. The Raiders lost a, a yard on a running play. Second and 11. Gannon throws far side. That's complete. Tim Brown to the 40-yard line. A pickup of four on the play, and it'll be third and seven. Anytime you play the New York Giants, you've got to block make Michael Strahan first. But Tim Brown, he draws a lot of focus in the coverage. There's Michael Strahan. Lincoln Kennedy, he's big enough for two people. 15 sacks leading the NFL. John Gruden says, oh, yeah, we'll give our people some help on him. Gannon throws this side. Jerry Rice has it. Midfield and out of bounds close to the 45-yard line of the Giants. 14-yard pickup on the play. Well, Will Peterson, number 24, actually went and was trying to make an interception. Misses it. Jerry Rice still able, able to make the catch, even though Will Peterson's right in front of him. Looks like everybody's covered down the field. And Peterson just takes a bad angle, thinking that he has a chance to catch the pass. What a game Jerry Rice had last week against San Diego. He catches for 131 yards and three touchdowns. Cameron throws far side, Tim Brown, to the 40-yard line of the Giants. You know, getting ready for this game, Greg, John Gruden, he walked into us, you know, yesterday afternoon, what did he say? Man, this giant team, this defense, the defense is very good. It has talent at all three levels, at defensive line, linebacker, and defensive back. But what makes it and really gives it a chance to be more than just good is they do so many things on defense. A lot of different uh, styles. They blitz. They got a lot of zones. So it makes it hard for people to prepare for what the Giants are going to do in a particular day. Inside the 40. Yeah, he said the Giants are a team that has so much defense, it's tough to prepare for all of it. Plus, he makes a good point. They have a nucleus that's been together for a number of years. With the same coach, John Fox, the defensive coordinator, and Jesse Armstead, uh, Jason Seahorn, Michael Strahan. All these guys have been together for quite a few years. So just like a veteran offense, they can keep content. They just keep putting in different styles of defense, and it just makes it hard to get ready for them. Third and two. Gannon will throw for it. Pulls it down. He's going to run. Has the first down. Brought down at the 33-yard line. It's a first down for the Raiders. Mike Barrow made the stop after a five-yard gain. I think I've seen Rich Gannon run more today already in those two than I have in most games. He does not like the run. Looks to move to throw the pass. As the first quarter winds down, the Oakland Raiders three out of four on third down already today. We've played one quarter at Giant Stadium. Raiders lead it by a score of 7-3. to three. Back for the start of the second quarter, there is a look at Michael Strahan, number 92. Three Pro Bowls in his career, but not last season. We're talking with Michael about hey, what's the difference, and he's maybe I'm a little bit smarter football player than I used to be. Couldn't get enough praise from John Gruden, who said he is exceptional and goes all out on every play. Gannon changing things up at the line. Gives now to Garner. Garner bouncing outside. Cuts it back inside now and comes up short of the 25-yard line. Well, Charlie Garner, 
he has about as much motion going as any running back I've ever seen. He fakes so much, I think he fakes himself out, but he, not only is he quick and goes side to side, he is a tough guy that will try to run you over when he gets that opportunity. Tyrone Wheatley now inside the 25 to the 22 yard line. And Wheatley, a former New York Giant, now in his fourth season with the Oakland Raiders. Yeah, you know what? Tyrone Wheatley, I know when he comes back here, he wants to play well. He hasn't played the last few weeks because of injury. But when he was here with the Giants, when I watch him now with the Raiders and think back to how the Giants used to use him in past years, the Raiders use him the right way. He's a big back. He needs to be way behind the quarterback in the eye formation, and he needs to run straight ahead. And he does it very well for the Raiders. Now Gardner and Randy Jordan in the backfield. That's Jordan in motion. The pitch is to Garner. Spins to about the 22-yard line. Also take a look at Charlie Garner. You can be Sean Williams, the safety for the Giants, and see if you can bring him down. A little shake. Oh, let me give you a shake and a spin. Pretty good. You know, we've, we've talked about the quality running backs that they have in Wheatley and Garner and Randy Jordan and Zach Crockett and Terry Kirby and Michael Strahan yesterday. He says, they have so many good running backs. How do they fit them all under the salary cap? That's, you know what made me start thinking? Yeah, how do the Raiders get so many stars and so many running backs when it's hard to have two? They got like four or five of them. Gannon with the screen. Garner almost tripped. Keeps his feet to the 10, to the 5. The right guard, Adam True, the center, and the perfect play call by the Oakland Raiders. They're not a big screen team, so it will, it will catch you off guard. But look at number 73, Frank Middleton. Adam True got a good block to the inside. John Ritchie down the field. Charlie Garner untouched for the touchdown. Charlie Garner's second rushing touchdown of the season. And I'm sorry, reception, first pass reception. And the extra point attempt by Janikowski is good. 12.52 to play in the first half. It's a 14-3 Raider lead. Watch Adam True, the center, comes out and blocks Michael Barrow, who has Charlie Garner in the passing game. Gets him to the ground. Then Frank Middleton, the guard, he's just trying to find somebody to hit. With Charlie Garner's scamper, that's Rich Gannon's 16th touchdown pass of the season. Well set up, good disguise by the Raiders, and offensive lineman in a screen game you've got to go downfield you've got to go to the ground make the defenders jump over you they did all those things Stoutmeyer and Dixon are deep and this would be Dixon from the one 15 20 penalty markers fly and he is brought up short of the 25 yard line by Johnny Harris Going to be a hold on the Giants. Who was I talking to one time? Well, get the call. Holding 57 on the return team during the run back. 10 yard penalty, first down, timeout. The rookie Clayton White, guilty of the receiver, will try to figure out who Phil was talking to when we come back. Quick pass out here to the side and across the 10 to the 13 yard line is Ike Hilliard. I was going to say, Greg, you remember we were talking to a coach one time. Just I was going to make a point about special teams penalties. And I just say the players got to know through all the games they watch and all the times they get called that they can't hold into these, these certain things. And the, guy, and the coach said to us, they just don't realize. They think they're out in this open space and nobody can see them. But it's actually easier to spot the penalties in special teams than normal play because there is such separation with the players. Blitz. Collin gets rid of it. Barber. 20 yard line out of bounds. First down Giants. Well, that is a nice play by Kerry Collins, but you know what? He is good at this kind of uh, throw. Having pressure because he's been under a lot of pressure all year long, but 
shows his talent going backwards makes a perfect throw to Tiki Barber. Well with with all of the pressure that has been on Kerry Collins to perform as we watched the game film yesterday he threw many a good ball against oh. the Minnesota Vikings. Terrific throws with guys all around him not even able to move his feet and still had the arm strength to rip it down the field. Here's Barber. Barber bounces off one tackler gets across the 25 before Rod Coleman makes the stop. And of course that comes back to this Greg the offensive line of the Giants. You know last year Jim Fossil went out got a lot of new offensive linemen uh, Glenn Parker Lomas Brown there's coach Jim McNally the offensive line coach but he went out there and got them. they did a terrific job last year this year the performance has dropped off and it's a it's a big concern and that's why they want to run the football today to keep the situations manageable so Kerry Collins is not always under pressure throwing the football. On second and seven to give up the middle to the 34 is Barber. Plus a good, a good positive for that line as they get Dusty Ziegler back today. He missed the second half at Minnesota with a concussion. And there's a lot of other reasons why you'd want to run the football not only for your team and for the health of your quarterback but we can see what we've seen already to slow the Raiders offensive down uh, offense down somewhat because it is good and it's very as we've said many times very diversified a third and four Collins quick drop throw wow. sideline is it caught it is complete to the 35 yard line and a first down to Amani Toomer one of the things Kerry Collins says he likes to do try to get Amani Toomer involved early on in the game yeah we hear that quite a bit from quarterbacks in this day and age you get so much publicity so much is said about all quarter, quarterbacks and the wide receivers they judge their games too often just on how many catches we're making and we heard it from Rich Gannon too you got to get the ball to your wide receivers early so they feel like they're part of the game plan and get their confidence up on first down now Collins under pressure and tries to get rid of it Barber juggling catch to the 40 and up to the 42 yard line before Anthony Dorsett pulled him down fine play at both ends of that pass Rod Coleman number 57 a defensive lineman for the Raiders you know what when you got a screen play Ron Stone just lets him go too quick you got to give the quarterback a chance to fake and set up the screen but nice catch by Tiki Barber you know, Tiki Barber, he's the guy in this giant offense, I think, that you just got to keep getting the football to. He's kind of a difference maker. He can make simple plays. He can turn them into big plays on offense. Barber gets the football in second and three, has a first down, bounces outside, shoves off a tackler. That was Marquez Pulp coming up trying to make the stop. Ten yards and a first down. Well, Tiki Barber, not the biggest running back in the NFL, but with his speed, Charles Woodson comes up for the tackle high and just gets run over. See, Charles Woodson has a really bad turf toe. In other words, the, the big toe of his right foot, it's sprained, does not practice the whole week, keeps his foot in a cast. First action he sees is out here during the game. Ron Dane for a couple up the middle, and you were talking, Phil, that for someone who, uh, who, who wouldn't know they might think that well, if you get a chance to rest all week then you'll come out here and you'll be fresh and you'll be sharp. Well I think John Gruden answered it for us. I, I, talk, I said to him coach how do you feel about Charles Woodson not practicing and John Gruden very uh, what do we want to say a stickler for little things has a real problem it bothers him a lot that Woodson gets no snaps at all during the week. And you just got to rely on the fact that he's a tremendous athlete and he can adjust by coming out here during the games and, and find a way to play. Collins to throw on second and eight. Quick pass and that's complete just inside the 40 yard line to Ike Hilliard. That'll be about a yard or so short of a first down. You know, when you watch games on TV, you always put these stats up quarterback under pressure, he's sacked, he's hit. But we're not going to do that today with Kerry Collins. We're going to put a stat up how many times he throws without being under pressure. Because so far, almost every throw today he is going backwards to try to get rid of the football and that was again full speed going back whips it out there and throws the ball accurately on the move and now on third and one 
Barber alone back behind Collins. He'll get the football. He'll get the first down to about the 36. So the Giants say they want to stick with the run, and they're doing their fair share of it. They are. You know what? When you can run the football, when you that's what the game is about. It's a physical game. And when you can run it and show the other team that you have physical dominance on them, that leads to so many other things, the confidence of your team. But of course, it means you can you should protect the quarterback better, and it should help play action passes. 6.9 yards of attempt. Tiki Barber, he carries 69 yards. Collins to throw. Inside the 25, there's a marker down in the backfield. Amani Toomer made the catch. And it's going to be a holding call against the Giants. I see Lomas Brown in the backfield with Reagan Upshaw, number 91. Holding, 76, offense, 10 yard penalty, replay first down. Lomas Brown against Reagan Upshaw. Oh, nice move. Reagan Upshaw tell us he saw Lomas Brown as the two teams exchanged positions on and off the practice field yesterday. And Lomas said to him, don't work me over too much tomorrow. That's right. He needs, what did Reagan say? He's trying to pull some of that veteran thing on me or whatever. And he goes, don't fall for it. Collins on the draw out of Barber. And the Raiders don't fall for it. Daryl Russell makes the stop at about the 45. Yeah, it's an interesting to see Daryl Russell on the inside making the stop. Suspended for the first four games of the season. The Raiders hope, John Gruden hopes that Daryl Russell turns it on and just turns in to be one of the most dominant defensive players in the league because they know if he does that, then it's going to change the, the whole look of their defense. They have a chance to stop the run and, and get back to being a dominant defense. Raiders feel that Daryl Russell played his best game against San Diego a week ago. Play fake this time. Collins on the move. Trips and goes down. On the other side of the midfield stripe, Reagan Upshaw makes the stop on top of him. One thing this Raider front four can do, they're not real great at stopping the run, but they can rush the passer. And you get in situations where they know you're going to throw it. It is just who can get to the quarterback first that time. It's Reagan Upshaw again. 28th sack of the season of Kerry Collins. Watch Reagan Upshaw. Oh, it's just good hustle. Keeps working. Collins with third and a bunch. Throws to the far side, and that's complete to Ron Dixon. And Dixon wrestled out of bounds short of the 40 yard line. It'll be fourth down. Well, the Giants, Jim Fossil was concerned about the protection of his quarterback and concerned about his offensive line, and he told us he's not against making some changes in this game if he has to. Rodney Williams again with that cast on his right wrist handled the ball pretty well last week at Minnesota and handled it well on the first punt here today. Tim Brown is deep for open. Brown fair catch called for made at the 10 yard line. 451 to play in the second quarter. Oakland with the ball and the lead. The New York Giants down 14-3, removing the football well until the holding penalty put them in a hole. And they'll start it off on the ground. With Tyrone Wheatley. Let's check in with Armin. Greg, you know when you're seven and two, there's whole, not a whole lot of turning points in your season, but the Raiders had one two weeks ago following a disappointing loss to Seattle. John Gruden telling us last night he had really hit the frustration wall over what he called the vigilante play of his defense. Guys going off on their own, trying and failing to make plays. He said, if you're not disciplined in this league, you're going to get smoked. And if there is one difference with John Gruden and the Raiders, it's discipline. Back to you. Okay, Armin, I thought you were going to say he hates to get smoked. <laughs> he does. Second and nine. Going far side, complete to Garner. And Garner on the move again and appears to have a first down at the 21-yard line. 
run out of bounds by Jason Seahorn. And Phil, you were talking about it during the timeout. What an impact free agent Charlie Garner has been for the Oakland Raiders. Name me one in the league that's had a better impact on the football team than Charlie Garner has. Quick feet, good receiver. I think that gets lost sometimes. You know, the Raiders, they lose Napoleon Kaufman. He retires. Charlie Garner comes in, runs the football. We've seen that. But Rich Gannon says he hasn't been around a running back who is better in the passing game than Charlie Garner. Gannon pulls it down and now on the move. Throws to the sideline. Incomplete. Intended for Jerry Porter. The official says no. It was awfully close. Again, Gannon getting out of the pocket, getting extra time to throw the football. Perfect throw. Oh. And he was in. I thought he had control of the football. Knee on the ground. Garner again. 2 to 25. You know, watching Gannon scramble that last time reminds us Michael Strahan says a couple of things about Gannon. He takes good angles to avoid the rush, and also when he scrambles, you know that he's not looking to run first. He's still looking to throw the football before he runs. Yeah, he is. Rich Gannon, I think, the most mobile quarterback in the league when it comes to moving around in the pocket, finding lanes to throw the football down the field. Now, the Giants, I, they, I talked to them, and they were thinking of putting a spy so when Gannon moved, they could get in the passing lanes and stop him from running, but I have not seen that defense yet. Third and six. Gannon needs the 31-yard line for a first down. Pass time over the middle, wide open. Jerry Rice, 45, midfield, dragged down at the 40-yard line of the New York Giants by Jason C. Well, what they do, Jerry Rice has one-on-one -on -one coverage with Jason Seahorn. Watch Jerry Rice come across the formation real fast. Usually you would go to the outside, but when he cuts back inside, it catches Jason Seahorn by surprise. And nobody in the middle of the field. Good design and terrific execution by Jerry Rice. 34 yards on the play. Rice, three receptions for 65 yards. Flies, and that pass is complete to Tim Brown on the near side of the field. Greg, while we're waiting on this flag, to go back to that Jerry Rice play. This is going to be against Oakland. On that Jerry Rice play, when a defensive back sees a receiver coming across the field, and he knows there's a couple of the receivers on that side, they're worried about getting picked. Illegal formation, number 72. On the right side of the line was uncovered. It's a five-yard penalty. Re replay first down. That's a two-minute warning. You heard it from Bill Carollo. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Raiders lead it 14-3, and we'll be right back. Corner to sack. Yep. It's a first and 15 for the Raiders from the 46-yard line. Again, pump fakes. Going to go up the middle. Tim Brown is there. 15-10. Six yards. The Raiders tried to run this exact same play. It's a slant go on this side. The safety will go over because Gannon looks and look, the middle of the field is open. Tim Brown with his sixth touchdown reception of the season. See, Will Allen thought that the safety would be in the middle, but the safety went with the pump fake to the left side. That's why he was wide open. Janikowski's kick is good, and the Raiders lead it 21-3. And John Gruden is a happy Raider coach right now. The exact same play last week. Rich Gannon made the fake, the pump fake. Tim Brown was open down the middle for an 80-yard touchdown, but Rich Gannon couldn't see over the defensive line. Today he could. The rain has begun to fall. Here's Ron Dixon, 15-20. And 
just short of the 25 yard line and now he's pushed forward just across. Rich Gannon has completed 203 passes this year. That touchdown pass, the first one longer than 40 yards. Out of the middle with the pump fake by Rich Gannon. Will Allen says, where's the safety? As John Gruden says, yes, we. And that's the way to do it. And John yeah. Fox says that's not the way we do it. Well, he knows he had a safety in the middle, but not much Sean Williams can do. Rich Gannon made a terrific pump fake to his left. If you're a safety, you've got to honor that. On first down, Raiders look to be offside. Penalty markers fly. Well, the deep pass is incomplete, intended for Amani Toomer. And he and Eric Allen got a little caught up down the field. Tony Bryant was the man who jumped for the Raiders. Offside, 94 defense, five yard penalty. Replay first down. It'll be first and five. shotgun and it batted as it left his hand and falls incomplete and Daryl Russell was the man charging up the middle well I think the big thing for the Giants 21 to 3 your defense you're going against an offense that's really clicking and you know they have many more surprises and and plays for you Jim Fossil wants to run the football today might be a change of game plans coming out here in the second half Giants with a minute 31 on the clock and all their timeouts remaining. Collins throws far side. Tiki Barber out of bounds, but has enough for the first down at the 37 yard line. Well, Phil, I just go back to that point where this game was pretty much still in the seesaw stage and the Giants were moving the football and then a costly holding penalty put no, them in the hole. That's right. And, and that you, when your offensive line struggles you go off oh, they just wouldn't have the holding penalty well they're struggling so you know guys are getting by and they're hitting the quarterback so sooner or later you got to say I can't let the guy hit the quarterback again and you pull him down and you get the the 10 yard penalty against you the rain is falling here at Giant Stadium Colin eludes the rush the pass is incomplete and that's intended for Ike Hilliard this Raider defensive line is big and it is fast and they can overpower you. Brady Jackson when you had a good shot in there a second ago from the profile. He's got a little weight carrying him in the front. But Darrell Russell if he ever just turns it on and gets the hang of what he really wants to be as a football player. He's unblockable almost. He gives to Barber. Barber out to about the 45 yard line. <laughs> looking, looking at Grady Jackson. What did it? Reagan Upshaw said the last thing you want out there is you don't want Grady to lay on you. <laughs> yeah, he says when we're rushing the passer, you don't want Grady to hit you. He goes, you know, this Kerry Collins, Reagan Upshaw talking about Kerry Collins. He says, well, he takes a lot of hits. And Kerry Collins sneaking for the first down there, and then they call a timeout. 55 seconds on the clock. Here's Tiki Barber has come to play today. Yeah, I so see. He's definitely got the quickness and the determination. You can just see it when he runs the football, when he catches it. And, you know, yeah, we do talk during the commercial sometimes. But the rain coming down, Greg, we, we asked Kerry Collins because we thought it might rain today during the game, and doesn't phase him at all. He grew up here in the Northeast and has played in a lot of rainy football games and still throws the football extremely well, even on days like this. He is 7 of 10 throwing the ball today, but has nothing longer than 10 yards as far as completion. First and 10, 55 seconds left. The Giants have two timeouts. Over the middle, that's complete, and Barber is down at the 46-yard line. Derek Gibson, the Giants' first-round draft pick out of Florida State, makes a stop after a five-yard gain. Clock continues to move. And now we get a timeout with 31 seconds remaining. And it's the Raiders who call timeout. 
31 seconds to play. Each team with two timeouts remaining. Five wide receivers for Collins. And here comes the blitz. The pass out this side, incomplete, intended for Barber. Good adjustment by the Raiders. They saw five wide receivers, so they immediately go to a defense that allows the safety to blitz. It was uh, Anthony Dorsett, nobody to pick him up, and Kerry Collins has to basically throw the football away. So it's third and five. 28 seconds on the clock. Collins with time this side, and this time he throws it behind Ike Hilliard, his intended receiver. And on fourth down, the punting unit comes on. Sixty-two yards passing total for Kerry Collins in the first half. That last pass is the first time he's really been off target. Uh, target today when the receiver was open. Tim Brown back at his own 10 yard line. Rodney Williams barely gets it away. And this one will bounce on the goal line and into the end zone for the touchback. So the Raiders will take over at their own 20 yard line and Daryl Russell was hard charging on that punt. Nice move up front by Daryl Russell. Oh, it went under him. Oh, big Daryl coming up the middle. You know, that's that's a tough chore. Jack Golden, the linebacker, being an offensive lineman, they put him in there in those situations because they can block and run down the field faster to make the tackle, but that is a tough chore trying to block Daryl Russell. So Gannon takes a knee. Time will run out on a first half that was great for the Raiders and not so good for the New York Giants. You go ahead and you try to play with your original game plan Greg early here in the third quarter and as soon as you know that the game is really in jeopardy what you you change that game plan you have to start blitzing Rich Gannon and try to have the make the Oakland Raiders turn the football over. Well you can see how hard it is raining now here at Giant Stadium. Ron Dixon and Emmanuel McDaniel are deep for the kickoff which is not very deep at all and from the 16 yard line it's Dixon Dixon to the 30 penalty marker flies as he goes down at the 32. And this is going to go against the Giants. The Giants got to start rooting for Janikowski to kick it in the end zone. So they don't have a foul and get it to the 20 yard line. Holding 59 on the return team during the run back. 10 yard penalty. First down. Let's go down to Armin. Greg, I asked John Gruden what his message was to the team for the second half. He said, hey, you're playing the NFC champions. They're going to play their heart out. He said, also, if you got to think about things, just think about three weeks ago when they were playing the Cowboys and they came back and win to win 27 24 in the second half. Back to you. All right, Armin. One thing you know, and all the times that we've talked to John Gruden over the years, he will always have a message. That's right. Rain begins to come down a little harder. First down for the Giants as Colin calls signals in the pitch for Tiki Barber. And Barber can't make the turn. He's tracked down by William Thomas on the far side. There was some question as to whether or not William Thomas would even be here, let alone play today. Uh, his brother died tragically down in Texas, and he didn't make the trip out here with the team. Only flew in this morning. And our best wishes go out to William Thomas and his family. Second and ten. That's me. And goes down. And that's William Thomas in on the quarterback. A pretty simple blitz by the Oakland Raiders. William Thomas, number 59, just comes up in there. Greg Camella misses him. Ron Dane misses him. And Gary Collins, used to the pressure, goes down for the sack. And you see Thomas going off to the side. Glenn Parker has an injured hip his return is questionable and Jason Whittle 
the third year offensive lineman out of Southwest Missouri is in in place of him. Third and 17. Collins steps up, throws far side, and that's complete to Amani Toomer, and Toomer had enough for the first down. Oh, what and a you know, throw. That's, I was about to say, that's a heck of a throw anyway, particularly in the pouring rain. Sideline, in the rain, tight coverage, and Kerry Collins just sticks it in to, to Amani Toomer. I have seen Kerry Collins over the years. I'll never forget when he was at the Carolina they were playing in Green Bay in the championship game. It was really cold, extremely windy, and he threw the football down the field. I, I, I'll never forget it. Threw the football extraordinarily well that day. Collins to throw again. Over the middle, incomplete. Toomer got a hand on it. Darrell Russell on the hit, taking care of Kerry Collins to the ground. And then you, you, Greg, you go back. The Giants offense you talk about it struggling you talk about a quarterback who fumbles yes some of it is his fault but again another hit going to the ground how do you as a quarterback continually trust what's happening up front when you're getting hit in all these situations on second and ten Barber, Barber to the 40 Across the 45 to the 47-yard line and a first down for the Giants. 15-yard pickup. That's what you do is it with the Giants offense. Sean Payton calling the plays. You'd want to throw the football because you know you got to score points to get back in this, but you sprinkle in some runs to keep the defense honest. And the Raiders playing pass, get caught. Tiki Bar Barber makes a nice run. You saw William Thomas go off to the side. He is back onto the field. And so is Glenn Parker on the line now for the Giants. On first down, Barber. Oh, no, it's uh, Ron Dane. Excuse me. And Dane still on his feet and diving for the first down marker, and he has a Giants first down. Well, every time Ron Dane comes into the game and they hand him the ball, it seems like there's just no running holes for him to go into. But this time, good job. Glenn Parker, nice kick out block. And Ron Dane makes the first guy miss, avoids the second tackle. And you can tell on that run, that run alone shows you and shows me that Ron Dane, the, the fact that he lost some weight during the offseason, a little quicker and a little faster. Barber back into the lineup. Penalty markers fly. The pass to Camilla out of the backfield. And Camilla out of bounds at the 35-yard line. And this was an offside against the Raiders. What do you take, first and five or second and two? I'd take second and two. But what would you take? I would take second and two, too. Offside, defense, number 91. That penalty is declined. Second down. I would say you were head coach material, Greg, but... <laughs> <laughs> that was fairly easy. <laughs> that might be stressing just a little too much. Reagan Upshaw having success against Lomas Brown. He knows the Giants are down, and he is trying to trying to take advantage of the situation, get to the quarterback. Line of scrimmage, the 35-yard line. Ron Dane in the backfield on second and two. Collins had to fall on the loose ball. He's in. And Camilla trying to uh, protect his quarterback a little bit. Interesting conversation with John Ritchie. He and Greg Camilla go back a ways. Both of them were teammates at Stanford. They actually switched games. Who's going to start? Camilla would start one week. John Ritchie would start the following week. I'll tell you, a conversation with John Ritchie is in and of itself an adventure. Third and four. Straight drop for Collins. Running out of time. Throws over the middle. Incomplete. Juravicious, the intended receiver. Well, I, I could, sw could swear Kerry Collins gives a hard count, and the Raider defensive line jumps off sides. I was right. Reagan Upshaw, 91, was absolutely in the neutral zone. And Kerry Collins 
Not a hard hit, but again, goes to the ground. And on fourth and four, the Giants are going to go for it. Defensive lineman in the neutral zone. It happens all the time. It's not called enough. Collins with time. Throws incomplete. Ike Hilliard wants the penalty flag thrown on Eric Allen, and there is no flag. Good pass protection for Gary Collins. But as you look down the field, I did not see a receiver come open. No penalty. Well, the Giants offense had a little sense of urgency watching that drive. They did some good things. We'll see how the defense reacts to what they did at halftime. And they're coming. Boy, are they coming. Just ahead of the snap, but they're coming. Kenny Holmes was in around the right side. Offside, 90. Defense unabated to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. On a first and five now. Here's Garner. And Garner tripped up, hit hard in the backfield. Number 53, Brandon Short, the linebacker. Well, we had one penalty and one play, Greg, and I think we've answered that question. Look at the Giants' penetration, the number of players near the line of scrimmage. They are going to challenge the Oakland Raiders' offense here in the second half. That's Sam Garns. He's the deep man in the secondary on second and seven. Gannon throws out here. Garner, his man slipped. He's run out of bounds just short of the 50-yard line. Sean Williams came out with him and slid down as the pass was delivered. Yeah, most of the time when a running back or an offense in the National Football League, since it's back in motion to get out near a wide receiver position, it's just window dressing. They don't want to throw it to him, but with Charlie Garner, the Raiders, they do it. Not only does he go out and catch the short passes, Greg, we've seen him go down the field for long ones. We've seen him run routes to the inside, gain and throw it to him, and he, he does. He catches the football like a wide receiver. Garner gets a breather. Wheatley replaces him in the backfield on first down. And Wheatley finds running room across midfield and pushes his way to the 46-yard line of the Giants. Six-yard pickup, and it's second and four. Nice job by Tyrone Wheatley. When you have a big offensive line, which the Raiders do, then you put a big running back in there, and if you just move the defenders a little bit, he is going to push it up there for an extra yard or two, and Michael Strahan just gets butt blocked by Lincoln Kennedy. And that's one of the reasons why we haven't talked a lot about Michael Strahan today. Lincoln Kennedy is so big, Michael Strahan can overpower most tackles. You cannot overpower Lincoln Kennedy. Wheatley tries the left side, and there's not much there. Lincoln Kennedy is listed at 6'6", 335. Now, Michael Strahan, he probably goes about 280 pounds. He's fast and he's strong. But when you're hitting a guy this size, it's just... It doesn't have the same effect as it does against most tackles in this league. And Jim Fossil told us, he says the, the change in Michael Strahan is that now he does, he has a speed, of course. He's running over blockers, and that's how he's getting most of his sacks. Well, that's not going to work today. Raiders go with a double tight end on third and two. Gannon rolling, looking, running out of time. Now escapes a tackler and throws incomplete. You hear the word elusive attached to Rich Gannon all the time, and there's a perfect example. Well, even even Rich Gannon's like, hey, how did I get out of that? Because Michael Strahan, it's a play-action pass. He's blocked by the running back, has Rich Gannon. Now, you know, some people think Rich Gannon is an undersized quarterback. Well, he's about 6'3", about 225 pounds, and I don't think that's undersized. Gannon has not been sacked today. Tiki Barber is waiting for the punt from Shane Leckler. Leckler bounces it into the end zone and it'll come out to the 20 yard line. We have 8.06 to play in the third quarter. Raiders still lead it 21 to 3. 
And a first and ten for the Giants from the 20 yard line. Play fake to Barber. Collins throws this side, under throws Amani Tumor. It'll be second and ten. Yeah, Kerry Collins needs about a, a, a half a second more so he can really get his feet up underneath him so he can throw the football down the field. That time, pressure coming from the outside again. He didn't step up quick enough, and it makes him throw the football short of his target. Now, the last three possessions, the Giants have shown that they can move the football. They have done it. They just haven't been able to finish. Second and ten. Here comes the blitz with the pitch is to Barber. Barber coming to the near side. Turns the corner. 25 and reaches the first down marker at the 30-yard line. William Thomas ran him out of the bounds, and we'll check back in with Jim Nance in New York. All right, the Ravens looking awful strong here today, Greg. Brooken, 71 yards on the ground and two short touchdown runs. 17-0 Baltimore. Jacksonville has only 76 total yards. Let's go back to you. Baltimore's Ravens on the road in a pretty impressive performance considering they're missing some pretty key players. They have the Jacksonville Jaguars shut out. Giants first down now at the 32. Dane is in the backfield. Play fake is to him and the throw to the far side. Incomplete. He'll hear the intended receiver and Charles Woodson right there with him. Well, I know this. I don't know if I could take Tiki Barber out of the game because so far he has shown that he is the only giant offensive player who can really is a threat. They can give his team a chance to make the big play. Tiki Barber 17 touches 135 total yards and Garner hasn't had a bad day himself as John Gruden checks his charts. 106 yards on the ground for Barber. Collins with time this time throws this side. Jura Vicious slips and falls down at the 37 yard line. Well, Joe Jura Vicious just puts too much effort into catching the football. But hey, it's understandable why. When you drop a couple passes, he comes underneath, he's open, Collins finds him. He works so hard at securing the catch that it stops him from getting any extra yards after the catch. Unable to add to the yardage he had. The Giants look at a third and five. First down. A couple times today, Kerry Collins gets excellent protection. Nobody open down the field. Does not get a tip. He throws it into the back of his own man. I think he hits Ron Stone in the shoulder pad. Right, you have to practice that one endlessly to get it right. First down for the Giants at midfield. Gonna go deep down this side. And Toomer! Did Toomer pull it in inbounds? The officials say. No. He's looking for help because of slip. He's not completely sure. Let's take a look at the replay. Abani Toomer to the outside. Oh, feel a challenge coming on, Phil? Well, maybe, but. I don't know if he had possession of it before his left foot gets down in in play. It's a big play, so Jim Fossil, watch Toomer. It's a challenging and rolling on the field. This is a 30-yard pickup if it's good. Well, Bill Corolla will let us know in a moment. After reviewing the play, it's been determined the receiver caught the ball and his second foot, left foot, is down inbounds for a catch. It'll be first down at the 21-yard line. 
That's a 30-yard pickup for the New York Giants to the Oakland 30-yard line. And I'm just asking myself, so what was I looking at? But here we go. Look at it one more time. No question defeat drag. Amani Toomer secures the football with his hands to his body. And I beg your pardon, the line of scrimmage is the 21-yard line. Well, the Giants, they need okay. a big play to get something going. They have to almost now, they're getting in a situation where they almost have to score a touchdown. Look at Collins' numbers here in the third quarter. On the ground, Tiki Barber. And Barber wrapped up at the line of scrimmage and pulled back by Rod Coleman and Greg Beaker. Giants with 14 first downs today to 12 for the Oakland Raiders. The Oakland Raider defense, the one thing they are doing extremely well at today, the, the corners are running everywhere with the wide receivers. No separation as far as getting open. Amani Toomer just makes a, a nice catch on the sideline to get something down the field for the Giant receivers. On second and nine. Collins throws out the far side. That's complete. Dan Campbell, the tight end. The ball is down. Ball was whistled down at about the 12-yard line. Again, watch Gary Collins looking down the field. He's actually going to fall back a little off balance and just flicks it out here to Campbell. Perfect throw. You know, he's, Kerry Collins is one of those quarterbacks. Jim Fossil, we talked to him. He says, I don't know. When quarterbacks have the ability and are very good at throwing off balance, I don't think you're, he's ever going to learn to stand in there and get his feet under the throw. On third and two, C.T. Barber runs and he looks for the first down inside the 10 to the five touchdown. Morton Anderson looking to move ahead of George Blanda to claim number two all-time scoring, and he does with point number 2004. More importantly for the Giants, Tiki Barber's run pulls them to within 21 to 10. 410 to play in the third. Glenn Parker pulling across with Greg Camilla. Two perfect kickout blocks. And then when you need a big run to score, Amani Toomer 81. Gets the secondary, Charles Woodson, and that's how you get a touchdown. Big run plays almost always involve wide receivers making good blocks down the field. New York Giants nine play drive. A key element, the challenge that stood up for the Giants. Anderson kicks Terry Kirby from the 12. Fall forward to the 25-yard line. Four minutes and one second remaining. The Giants are involved, and so are the fans. We'll be right back. First down for the Raiders at their own 30-yard line. Gannon throws over the middle and under through Jerry Rice. Incomplete. Boy, there's that great instinct by Rich Gannon with a pursuer up his back. He just got rid of it. He knew it, and it's the one thing. If you're the Giants and you're not going to chase receivers across the field, then you better keep defensive linemen in front of Rich Gannon because if he had just a half a second more, it's going to be a huge game for the Raiders' offense. Charlie Garner, running room on the left side, cuts it back 35 to about the 36-yard line. Mike Barrow, Jason Seahorn with the stop after a gain of six, and it'll be third and four. Well, you got the crowd back into it. If you're uh, for the Giants, you got some rain, a little bit of wind. It's about as difficult as you can make it for the Raider offense. Third and four.
Gannon going to throw. And it tipped. Gannon has the football and slides down at the 34-yard line. Boy, a couple things. That time the Giants finally kept somebody in the middle of the field so Rich Gannon couldn't move up and throw short passes if he wants to. Michael Strahan keeps hustling, knocks it out of Rich Gannon's hand, and how about that? Right back to the quarterback. Shane Leckler to kick away Tiki Barber. Good snap. Barber from the 18. Falls down and is down at the 23 yard line. 2.21 to play in the third quarter, and John Fox is all thumbs up for the Giants right now. Down for the Giants. The rain continues to fall. They give us to Barber, and Barber getting very little. Just over the 25 yard line. Grady Jackson, Greg Beekert with the stop. There's Michael Strahan, and on that pass that was tipped and grabbed by Rich Gannon. Strahan officially got a sack on that play and that is his league leading and career high 16th of the season. Yeah, you know Michael Strahan what he tell us yesterday he says you know sometimes you just got to be fortunate with these sacks it's you know every once in a while you get about four or five a year that are just luck. Now that one was not luck he called. Collins throws it out here that's complete to Camella and Camella out of bounds at the 35 yard line first down. Giants got a real nice mixture so far here in the second half. Still trying to run the football, but they're now they're into throwing it, to trying to deceive the defense. It's a blitz by the Raiders, and the quick fake by Kerry Collins is just enough to let Greg Camilla come out of the backfield and be wide open. Marquez Pope come out, came on a blitz, untouched. Collins saw him, he got rid of the football quickly. The ball just across the 35-yard line. Giants rolling up yardage here in the third quarter. The pitch for Barber looks for a block, cuts back inside, and picks up a couple. Clock continues to move. We have one minute to play here in the third quarter. Well, Greg, you you you, you said it earlier. The Giants have kind of made a few mistakes to stop some drives, and and if you're a Raider fan, you got to be concerned about the defense getting run on again. And now when it's crunch time, when you do have the Giants in a certain situation, they're not getting to the quarterback like they did in the first half either. Rain continues to fall. Barber. This time, Barber wrapped up just as he hit the line by William Thomas, who has played a whale of a game today. It'll be third and seven. And I doubt we will get another playoff here in the third quarter. It'll be a matter of Kerry Collins and the Giants turning around to go with the rain rather than yeah, against which, the rain. Which way is the rain coming? That's what I want to know. We saw a complete and total turnaround. The Giants registering 140 yards in that third quarter to Oakland's 19. And a third and seven. Collins throws incomplete, intended for Tumor. Looked like a good throw from Kerry Collins. Amani Tumor just cannot come up with the catch. He's covered by number 20, Torrey James. It right just goes the arms, right through, yeah. yes. Collins wanted a call that wasn't coming, and David Dunn is deep to receive the punt from Rodney Williams. Rodney Williams, again, with that fractured wrist, Tate has done an amazing job of handling the football. As I say that, he lost the handle and then gets off a booming punt inside the five and through the end zone. Has to cradle that ball. You see him protect the right hand. He got it away. Gannon brings the Raiders to the line. 
first down at their own 20 yard line. Garner. Garner tries the right side and not much doing there. Gain of the yard. We're looking at the rain falling, Phil, and as a veteran of many a game played in this stadium, uh, is it tough to play in this stuff? You know, Greg, it's it's not near as bad as everybody thinks it is. Uh, they do such a good job of keeping the footballs dry. Hey, besides the quarterback and the receivers, the rest of these guys like it. You know, they love the rain and how it feels, and they don't care. But for the quarterbacks and the receivers, it is not that bad. Second and nine. Again, ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage and falls incomplete. Lance Legree, the rookie out of Notre Dame, starting today in place of Keith Hamilton, got a hand on it. Now the Raiders just trying to find a way to get a first down, take some time off, and take some of this momentum away from the Giants. Cannot get it done. Lance Legree, good job. Can't get to the quarterback. Raise your hand up and try to knock it down. Now the Raiders look at a third and nine. The fans looking at the opportunity for the Giants to get the football back. Blitz. Gannon throws over the middle. Incomplete. Seahorn was there on Jerry Porter. What a change for the Giants defense. John Fox is probably over there going, we should have done more of this in the first half. Good timing on the blitz. Look at everybody coming. Rich Gannon just has to get rid of it. Nobody open down the field. Oh, Jesse Armstead almost knocks it down, too. Gannon, 0 for his last four, throwing the football. T.P. Barber deep for the punt. And Leckler booms it out of there. Barber takes a peek at the... Oncoming players gets a great block and runs out of bounds and then he's hit hard out of bounds and the Giants want a flag. There is no flag. 84 Jerry Porter. Tiki Barber definitely out of bounds. With the late hit Omar Stoutmeyer look at that shot. Nice block. Good job by the officials making sure that they had a little conference just to make sure they both saw the same thing and they were right. Jerry Porter delivered a late hit. And thanks to the penalty march off, this marks the first time today at 1350 of the fourth quarter that either team starts in the other guy's territory. Like this where the Giants are, you're behind, you get a big break, you get the football in the Oakland Raider territory, you, you pull out a couple of those plays that you haven't shown yet to go for a big strike right here. So my guess would be the Giants play action are going to look down the field to, to try to either score or pick up a lot of yards. Line of scrimmage, the 37 yard line. Ron Dane in the backfield. Collins throws this side. Nice grab by Camilla slides out of bounds inside the 35 yard line. Pick up a three second and seven. I had it all right except the long pass. Raiders 21, Giants 10. John Gruden saw his team grab all of the momentum in the first half, and you'd have to say the second half, the momentum has belonged to the New York Giants. Oh, on both sides of the ball. Here's the thing. Can the Giants take, it, take advantage of this right now? That's Greg Camella being looked at on the far side of the field. The pitch for Barber. And Barber down at the 35 yard line. Beekert and Grady Jackson closed on number 21. And that's Camilla on the far side of the field. Yeah, after he caught that last pass. Couldn't tell what happened to him. Well. They have a hold of and rubbing his left arm and left shoulder. We get word we'll pass it along to you. Meanwhile, the Giants are looking at a third and eight. On the blitz, Collins tried to get it away. It's an incomplete pass. 
William Thomas again that time on the blitz and the pass is incomplete. Well, Greg you talked about it earlier William Thomas his brother passed away. He just flew in for the game this week so emotional and he's showing it on the field again gets to Kerry Collins almost causes the fumble. What a game 10 tackles has a sack. Force the incompletion by Kerry Collins at time. The Giants are going to go on for it on fourth, fourth down. Fourth and eight. Collins needs to reach the 27 yard line. No blitz here. Collins pumps first, has a man wide open, and it's tipped away. Tory James got to deflect the pass away from Jurevicius. Kerry Collins had him. The rain, the ball slipped out of his hand just enough to let it hang in the air for Torrey James to knock it down. Rain falling harder now. The pitch for Garner. Garner cuts back to about the 37 or 38 yard line. Let's go back to that tipped pass for the incompletion. Well, let's watch it. The pump fake. Torrey James is down here. He gets caught up. Joe Jarevich is trying to sneak behind him. Because the ball slipped a little bit from Kerry Collins, it allows Torrey James to get back and knock it down. I saw him on the sideline, Greg. I was reading his lips. He goes, oh, I saw it all the way. And I we laughed. I said, no, he didn't. <laughs> He saw it, but if Kerry Collins would have thrown that ball and had a perfect spar on it, it would have got over him for a big game. Second and seven. Gannon throws up the middle, wide open. Tim Brown. Brown to the 30, dragged down at the 22-yard line. Sean Williams saved the touchdown. This is the same play that you saw Rich Gannon throw earlier for the touchdown, except this time he's going to make the fake to Jerry Rice. Tim Brown's going to go right down the middle. Look at it. The fake moved the safety over again, and look at the hole that Tim Brown has to run in. What's the fake by Rich Gannon? Just a little bit. Creates more space for Tim Brown, and nobody near him as he makes the catch. Brown, five catches for 98 yards and a touchdown. The give is to Garner, and Garner tripped up at the line of scrimmage by Brandon Short. Now the Giants, as you if you saw that, they have a safety in the middle of the field, and Rich Gannon makes the fake one way to, to move that safety so he can throw to the other side. Now the Giants usually have two safeties deep, so that play would never work, but since the Giants trying to get up, create a little pressure, more people towards the line of scrimmage, they have to put one safety, and he's back in the middle of the field. And what a huge swing in momentum that pass play to Tim Brown created. Play fake. Gannon to the far side. And that's complete to the tight end, Roland Williams. Sam Garns made the stop. It's uh, only a one yard pickup, and it's third and seven. Look at Rich Gannon, 19, 12 of 19, 202. This guy is a stat machine. Every single week he comes out, he puts up good numbers. And we've told you many times, the offense, it's very complicated for the Raiders. A lot of formations, a lot of shifting, and a lot of plays because a veteran quarterback with really the whole offense, all of them are veterans, able to gain the knowledge each week to run this offense. Third and seven. Gannon throwing toward the end zone. It is caught the touchdown. Tim Brown. Rich Gannon threw it sidearm. No, he did not. He threw it underhanded almost. <laughs> 19 yards. But just a good job. Rich Gannon going against throwing the field the football down the field against Will Allen. Tim Brown, another little fake to the outside turns it up will Allen naval never able to turn around and find the football Tim Brown adjusts for an easy touchdown Janikowski for the point after and it's good in the pouring rain Tim Brown pulls in another touchdown pass 28 to 10 Oakland 
comes down. 9.34 to play here in the fourth quarter. How quick does it turn around, Greg? Gary Collins has a chance to hit a big play to Joe Jarevicius. A couple plays later, the Raiders score. McDaniel and Dixon. From the six, McDaniel. And just across the 20, hit at the 22 yard line, maybe the 23. See if they can regain momentum in something of a hurry. Collins with time from the shotgun over the middle, and Toomer makes the grab at the 40 yard line. And that'll be a quick first down. Phil, we were talking about that touchdown pass by Rich Gannon, and he threw it sidearm, almost submarine, and it looked like his shoulder hurt. Why did he do it? Well, when we get a chance, Greg, maybe we'll go back and look at it, but it's a good way to secure the ball when there's bad weather, and Rich Gannon. Tiki Barber out of the backfield, and he's at midfield, and he has another first down. Let's go back to that play. Well, let's just watch it, and it, it, it helps Rich Gannon. He's so comfortable throwing the football from a lot of different angles, but if the football's a little wet, and as a quarterback, if you drop sidearm, just think about it. It lays on your hand. There's less chance of you throwing a bad football that way. Can you say shot put? No, it's not a shot put. He's a very good, one of the best I've ever seen at throwing the ball sidearm. Just a little bit high for Toomer. It falls incomplete. Stock clock is stopped with 8.29 to play. And I said, you know, Greg, the rain... It's not that big of a deal, but when it comes down like this, it becomes a big deal. So it has changed. It is pouring right now. And boy, Rich Gannon again. The numbers, 20 throws, the productivity, three touchdowns out of 20 throws. And it seems like it seemed like every completion was just huge as far as what they were trying to accomplish. Collins gonna go deep. It is overthrown, incomplete, intended for Amani Tumor. Eric Allen with the coverage down the sideline, and let's check in with Jim Nance in New York. Okay, Greg, a sparkling season in Jacksonville, but those Jaguars have been in an awful lot of games this season. Every game they have been in. They have played almost every single game this year down to the wire. Collins with time throws this side, and that is caught. Incomplete. Ron Dixon on the receiving end, and Torrey James was covered. Well, not only is it raining, your footing's bad. Take a look at this if it's coming at you. Since late in the second quarter, the Raiders have had just three first downs, but all of them on big plays by Tim Brown. A 46-yard touchdown in the second quarter, a 40-yard reception on the last drive, and a 19-yard touchdown catch. And Brown with the fair catch made at the 19-yard line. Well, the one thing, or the one complaint you hear about the Raiders is not enough big plays in the passing game. But today, we have seen a couple of them. Tim Brown making them all. There's his last touchdown. And, you know, if you're the defensive coordinator... Who do you cover? Who do you concentrate on? A week ago, it was Jerry Rice with three TD catches. Well, the Giants, their defense, it's kind of the story uh, of their season when they've lost games. They play real well, but then they have a little mistake or they give up a big play that just turns out to be so crucial, and they've given up a couple big ones here today. But mainly, it's not them. I think it's been tremendous execution and design by the Raiders' offense. straight ahead and goes head over heels at about the 22 yard line. Past defense the last four games 100 yard receivers each of the last three weeks and you can add Tim Brown to that category this week. Well last week Jerry Rice was the star receiver for the Raiders. This week it's uh, Tim Brown and every week it's Rich Gannon playing another solid football game and you know you can't say enough about him. Uh, people want to know is he is he like is Rich Cannon is he a star in this league and is he one of the top quarterbacks is that is that label over and absolutely it's been over for a long time. Crockett and 
Crockett across the 25 to the 27 and talking with with John Gruden and then you know it's funny to those who are not aware but it made perfect sense to you John Gruden saying boy there are times we get after each other and we yell names at each other back oh. and forth and it's, it's it's the norm and it's it's some it's some rough name calling they have and and I said to John Gruden I said is is Rich Gannon is he kind of high maintenance and what did he say he laughed he goes oh he goes I need 10 hours of sleep the night before the game because I know I got to deal with Rich Gannon because he he has a way if something that goes right in the field he says Gannon walks behind him and kind of yells it into his ear and then walks on and Gruden says that I just take it and we move on third and two and Crockett didn't get it what, what did John Gruden say? He says to Rich Gannon, he goes, oh, yeah, you're right, Rich. You're right. Yes, you're right. Okay, just go along. You're right. Well, I got a kick out of it when you said they called each other names, and it's not it's not you coach you and yeah. you, you quarterback. <laughs> it's not exactly what's going on down there. But they both have the same type of personality. They, they both want to be successful. They're extremely hardworking. Rich Gannon gets to the complex 6 o'clock in the morning. The only guy there is John Gruden. And at the end of that whole conversation last night, what did John Gruden say? I love it. I love him. Oh, he likes the friction. He does like the friction he has with his quarterback. It's, uh, it's a good example for the rest of the team. But they're going to work hard, and they expect you to, to do the same. Tiki Barber lets it bounce. It's going to roll inside the 25-yard line up to about the 23, and that's where it's blown dead. Look at all the Raider fans. I'd say there's a, I'd say there's a couple thousand easy of Raider fans here in the stadium today. In Giant Stadium, yeah, that's not Kenny Stabler. <laughs> the Giant Stadium, of course, is all season ticket holders. Leckler, oh, what a kick. Barber all the way back to his 15 yard line. And is tripped up right at the 15 by Brandon Jennings. Terrific special teams tackle by Brandon Jennings and a 64-yard punt by Shane Leckler. Nice adjustment. Thought Tiki Barber was going to go outside. He tried to cut it back. Still made the play. The good news for the Giants is going to be, even though they're going to be five and six, the Philadelphia Eagles lost today. And about those Washington Redskins. Well, the Redskins the are back in the race, but we still hope that you can win the division. Collins from the shotgun on first and ten. And this one intended for Ron Dixon, and that's incomplete. Tory James was there to break that up. Bresnahan on the far side. Well, not unlike everybody else out there. They're just absolutely drenched. And by the way, is Armin swimming? You know, I want to say this about Armin. You know, you got to have a game plan and you got to be able to adjust. But our man Armin did not bring a raincoat today. Collins goes down at the five. Reagan Upshaw, Charles Woodson. And there is Reagan Upshaw doing a little celebrating as he told us he hoped he would. Well, this is awfully tough for the Giants. They're sending all the receivers deep down the field. It's a blitz. Lomas Brown having a tough time with Reagan Upshaw and Kerry Collins holding the football that long. It results in a sack. Reagan Upshaw telling us he loves the game and he loves to pass rush. And we said pass rush and he said well I don't love the run I need to love the run a little yeah, bit more yes, uh, that was yes I would think this Raider defense needs to love working against the run a lot more two sacks today for Upshaw and Collins throws it away as he ran out of time in his own end zone well it's so tough I'm watching this I have a great view I can see all the receivers and in the rain you know they're going to rush the passer and the Giants are just sending everybody so deep down the field it's making it impossible for Kerry Collins. There is Armin. Another another quarter to play, and Armin would be collecting animals two by two down there. Rodney Williams from his own end zone. Corrals the football. They 
David Dunn says let this one bounce. This one won't reach midfield. Comes to a stop just across the 45 yard line. 435 to play in the fourth. Reagan Upshaw staying loose in the rain. Zach Crockett straight ahead across the 40 to the 37 yard line. You know, this is an Oakland Raider team that went to the AFC Championship game a season ago, and they go out and they add a Jerry Rice who came into this game today with 44 catches for 577 yards and six touchdowns. He's added three more catches today for another 65 yards. I'd say he's fit in rather nicely. I think he has. Look at their additions this year. Just two to start with. Jerry Rice and Charlie Garner how important have both of them been to this team and one that we a lot of people have forgotten about Trace Armstrong before he blew out his Achilles tendon was doing a really good job at rushing the pass for the Raiders. Crockett on second and two diving and appears to have enough for the first oh, down. There's Trace Armstrong made the trip. That was a that's a big it was a big loss for them because he is uh, a premier pass rusher had a tremendous year last year for the Miami Dolphins. But you know before we start seeing all these great things about the Raiders Greg it's it's a big deal. It's a really big deal when your defense struggles in the running game which they did they have and they did again today. First down, clock continues to move, coming up on three minutes and straight ahead, Crockett. And they, of course, bank on that big catalog of running backs that they have in Oakland. Yeah, you know, but let me go back to that running game, or the run defense, because this Raider offense is so potent and does so well, it's been consistent, but it kind of gets overlooked. Sometimes some of your weaknesses get overlooked. But there is going to be a game or two, and you hope it's not in the playoffs, when the offense doesn't click, then what are you going to rely on? Boy, John Ritchie. He is. Oh. Whoa. I said, John, can't you get another helmet that would fit differently and not do this? And I think he kind of likes it. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. Left side. Crockett hit hard and bounced back by Mike Barrow. But John Ritchie said, you know, this is. He goes, I've tried everything. I just cannot find a way but look at him being the lead blocker when you talk about fullbacks in the NFL oh, nice block by John Ritchie against Jesse Armstead he is truly one of the few that is a terrific lead blocker that allows his running back to get a lot of yards one of the few true blocking backs in the NFL third and nine with two minutes to play. Right side, Crockett. And it'll be fourth down. You know, we were just in Dallas on Thursday. Yep. And it's real easy for us, Phil, to hop a flight and move from one place to another. But we have to give a special thanks to the guys who drive our trucks from site to site. Not at all guys. Bob Ross, Patsy Carbonara, Denny Weber, and Terry Genzel. They made the 36-hour drive from Dallas after the Thanksgiving game so that we could bring you today's coverage from Giant Stadium. Troopers. Hey, troopers. They are. And the rest of our crew, Greg, that spent this whole week on the road with us. All the cameramen, the tape recorders, graphics people. Crockett carries on fourth down just across the 30 yard line and the ball will go over to the Giants with a minute 10 to play. Not an easy week for the for for all the guys this week because Thanksgiving they had to all spend it on the road with with uh, well with us. You and I, with us, <laughs> us. That's right. We had a good Thanksgiving Day dinner though this past Wednesday night. And we are deeply appreciative of all of their efforts as usual. John Gruden, that look on his face tells you it's going to be one happy flight back to Oakland. It is a wonderful high in the National Football League when you win the game. The bad part of it is you wake up tomorrow and you go, oh my gosh, we got to play again. And how are we ever going to beat that next opponent? It is short lived, but it is truly a great experience. Ron Dane up the middle. 
to about the 37 yard line and the clock continues to move and no one has any desire to stop the clock at this point. And the big thing and the good thing for the New York Giants they do show that they have some players out there that can get it done. The, the Philadelphia Eagles lost today and that's what Jim Foss is going to hang his hat on. The guys all right forget all this other we can still win our division. They get to play the Eagles. I think it's the last game of the year down in Philadelphia and if the Giants should just get on a a little run win a few games that game could be for it could be for the division title. Meanwhile the Oakland Raiders will improve to eight and two on the year and that likely will be the final play here on a wet Sunday afternoon here at the Meadowlands the Oakland Raiders come in. It wasn't easy in the second half but they held on and dispatched the New York Giants to move to eight and two while the Giants fall to five and six on the season. So that'll do it from the Meadowlands.